What's good guys, it's One World HD, and I just recently hit 50,000 subscribers. Now this is pretty crazy, I only hit this uh, the other day and I'm still still getting a lot, like I think right now I have 50,500 or so. So it's really nice to have grown in such a small period of time, I really appreciate it. And it's nice to kind of have a lot of people uh, listening to your opinion and stuff. I only started this off as a hobby, and it still is mostly a hobby. I've gotten a little, little bit more serious about it now, but for the most part, I still enjoy the community, and I don't really do it just for, uh, just for any like kind of gain, you know, popularity, any of that. That's all nice to have, but I still mostly do it for the community. And to show that, I did a video today um, about questions or a question I normally get, which is how to make videos or what do I, what do I use? How do I make theories? How do I make reviews? A lot of people want to know this and I do notice that a lot of people will typically, um, when I'm looking at videos of smaller YouTubers, um, they don't really have a proper like setup. They don't really have that many great programs. Some people even use like Windows Movie Maker, which is a pretty good program, but like they want to know how to get better stuff and where to get it and uh, what would be the best for them. So even if you're not into making theories or even if you're just a reviewer and you want to start off and you don't know really where to start, hopefully this video will tell you how to do it and it might be kind of dangerous doing this video just because you know, I'm giving away a lot of my secrets. I won't tell you every little detail so I mean some things I might just not say in this video and you may that you may want to know you know, just because it's, it's my secret, <laughs> you know what I mean? You wouldn't want to give away a secret that you use or anything like that, any sort of secret editing tip or any of that. And for the most part, you can learn a lot of this stuff on your own. So uh, without any further ado, here it is. Now to start off, you're generally going to want some good you know, materials, you're going to want some supplies. And some of this could just be programs, um, free programs, cheap programs, or you may actually need some physical equipment to properly um, make a good video, you know, all that. So the materials I would say that are most important, first off, you're gonna need something to plan with. Usually something to write on, um, or just like a program like Notepad on your computer. Uh, you could even use Microsoft Word to kind of plan everything out. And generally you're not gonna put this kind of information in your video, but it is good to kind of have an outline just to keep you organized. And even in the future, if you wanna create like blogs or you wanna post your information on forums. I've, I know in the past I've wanted to post information on forums, like information from my theory that I've sort of planned out, and it's generally easy to take this information, copy and paste it into a forum and be like, here's here's the raw information, so I don't have to uh, you know, retype everything that I said in the video. And it saves me a lot of time, so I suggest writing everything out and planning it. And next, you gotta, you're gonna want a good editing program. Now, like I said before, Windows Movie Maker, a lot of people do use it, and I know Theorists in the past have used it. I'm, I think Alpha Too Late used it, um, and I know a few other YouTubers did for, uh, for like writing out stuff. And it's not really a bad program, but it does make it kind of limited as to what you can use. Like you can only use certain pictures. You can't do all sorts of fancy overlays. And if you have a Mac, then you're gonna have iMovie. I think it is. I don't have a Mac, and I never used one, so I don't really know. But those two programs are alright, and I would actually suggest, if you don't have any experience in making videos, to start out with those programs before you move up to any more complicated programs. Just so you know how to do the basics like putting in putting in videos, putting in pictures, um, how to put sound in and put in music. And it's, once again, it's very limited, but it'll tell you the basics of what to do. So once you, if you believe you are beyond that, then you're going to want to get maybe something um, if you're on a tight budget, you're going to want to get maybe like a free or cheap editing software that gives you the ability to put overlays or put in um, layers, I would say. Make sure you can put in layers, like put in sound layers and video layers. If you if it doesn't have that, like if it's like Windows Movie Maker when it gives you like a certain amount of layers and it doesn't really give you um, a whole variety, then you're going to you're probably going to be very limited as to what you can do and those can run you for anywhere from you know fifty dollars or less i would say go for like 30 bucks if you're on a budget that should be good enough now i would personally suggest if you want to put in a little bit extra money a good program to start out with and this is still kind of beginner level it's more like intermediate level and i used it and it was really good when i first started uh youtube i did move up but it's called sony movie studio and you can get platinum uh, anywhere from 12 to 13 is usually good. 
Now this can run you about 70 to 80 dollars depending on um, I don't really know what it's priced at now, but that's I believe how much I spent So that's a good program. I would really suggest getting that if you're still kind of new and Then if you want to move up to the top programs, I would suggest Sony Vegas Pro 12 or 13 and this program is what I use most of the time and it works well just because it's user friendly and you're not gonna spend loads of time adding in effects. It t it's really simple, just like a click of a button you could add in like an effect and it really speeds stuff up, makes it easy to use and I'm a lot more comfortable with it. And if you want to be a little bit more daring and I have these programs called Adobe Premiere or you could use After Effects or you could use both, they're both pretty good. Now, from my knowledge, from what when I've used them, they're not as user-friendly as Sony Vegas Pro, but you can use a lot more stuff with it. There's a lot more uh, variety, and you can make your videos kind of unique. But once again, it might take you longer, especially if you're new to using it. I know I'm pretty good with editing, but even when I try to use these programs, it took me a lot longer than usual. But then again, I haven't really tried to use these as much, so if you want to use them, go right ahead. But I'm not going to show you how to use those just because I'm not a pro with them just yet. Now, as far as uh, everything else, those are the best editing programs from my knowledge. You could probably find something maybe better out there if you have anything, if you know of anything better, uh, you can write that in the comments. Um, but for voiceover and maybe face cam, you're going to want a blue snowball and uh, as far as like speech goes, that's, that'll run you about $50 or so. And for any sort of face cam you want in your video, you're going to want a Logitech C920 which can go around uh, 60 to 90 dollars. You can also use a tripod with your phone. That would be pretty cool as long as you have something uh, new like an iPhone or uh, an LG G4 which is what I use and it's got a really good camera. And then you're gonna want a picture editing program such as Photoshop um, which is good for thumbnails and picture editing for the video and that that program is pretty expensive um, especially along with all the other Adobe programs. So what I would suggest doing is get the Creative Cloud Bundle off of Adobe, the Adobe website. That's what they mainly sell now. And that's only like $50 a month, which isn't too bad if you uh, if you have the extra cash and it's better than paying like, you know, four grand for the Master Collection. If you have any deals for the whole Master Collection, that's also pretty good. But if you don't want to spend any money, a really good cheap alternative is Paint.net. Now this program is I used to use and it's really good and in some ways I actually preferred it over Photoshop but once again um, like any other program like any other advanced program you're gonna have more options with the, with Photoshop but it is a lot easier and user friendly to use paint.net and if you're starting off I would really suggest it it's good for thumbnails and making basic stuff so check it out I'll probably have the link in the description now as far as step-by-step -step stuff goes you're going to want to plan your ideas or at least if you're reviewing you're going to want to like at least write some notes just to know what you're talking about and you're going to obviously want to read all of one piece if you're doing a one piece video or even just another series you're going to want to read the whole uh, story in detail try the manga the manga is generally going to give you more information uh, more truth so you don't accidentally you know say something false that was filler and make sure you stay original and try to cover ideas that nobody else has like making a video such as like, I don't know, Sabo is X Drake's brother will probably kind of make you look stupid or a fool. And yeah, you just you just want to stay away from those kind of kind of videos. You want to make sure it's within the realms of possibility, unless you have a lot of evidence, then it'll be fine. But if you do anything like that, you're going to seem like a troll. I've made troll videos in the past, but they're just troll videos and I'm not serious about them. Now making a video like, you know, the Thousand Sunny will eat a devil fruit, um, probably won't bring you the kind of attention you want either. Probably bring you a lot of hate. Um, nothing wrong with a little bit of controversy, but you generally want to have evidence and reasoning behind your video. If you don't have a lot of evidence, you, you're going to want reasoning so people can at least see where you're coming from. Um, now some good ways to come up with ideas is to start maybe a group over YouTube um, or like a Skype call or something like that. Because when I first started out, I talked with a lot of other YouTubers and we'd come up with ideas. Um, I'm sure all of you know I talk with like Theory Theory 2, um, you know, Legendary Anime strong world a bunch of other youtubers and we discuss ideas and if i come up with like a stupid idea or if i um, falsely interpret something they'll just point it out or i'll give them some of my ideas and they'll give me some good feedback or give me more ideas on why it's true that'll definitely help you out a lot and i talk to um yeah i just generally share all my ideas with other youtubers and all that and it has helped me a lot 
Now, once you have written an idea and have somewhat proven it and you have planned it out, you're gonna wanna get to the editing stage. And let's just say that I wanna make a video about Sanji having armament hockey, all right? That's just a pretty simple theory, pretty obvious, but it's a good example. So for Sanji having armament, you could say that in, in chapter 668, Luffy said that Sanji had to, or could have fought Caesar using armament hockey, or sort of implied it, so that could be your evidence right there. And you obviously want to talk a little bit more detail about it, elaborate more on uh, your reasoning and evidence on why he should have it and why he does have it. And then you're going to want to talk about it in your video. Now I'm going to have to show you guys screenshots of what to click and all that. I don't have a program that records my screen. I only have Fraps which now only records gameplay on Windows 10, so that's unfortunate. But if you're using your voice, you're going to want to start with your voice first. making. Making other stuff first may kind of mess up the organization of your video, so um, you want to make sure you don't ramble too much, like I am now, kind of. Um, and you don't want to bring up any, or you do want to bring up evidence you found. Now, keep, keeping it anywhere from 7 to 10 minutes is ideal, and organization is once again key to the video. And make sure your evidence is all put together and you don't ramble too much about it. And then you want to add in music afterwards. Make sure that the music isn't copyrighted or your video could be claimed or taken down. Or your whole channel could be removed so you obviously want to avoid avoid that and you want to use royalty free music um, if you're some, to avoid any problems at all and make sure you give credit to the owner of the song and then you want to make sure that you um, include some kind of text maybe if you want to subtitle your video that'll bring it to more audiences around the world um, it'll expand your audience obviously because people can read it English instead of hearing it which makes it easier and my, people might click off if they're only hearing your voice, so that's why I usually subtitle my videos. Or if you just want to use only text, like other theorists do, like Alpha Too Late, that would be fine. Um, text can obviously work for people who enjoy reading more. Um, but obviously, you know, using voice and text will expand your audience once again. And using your planning as info, or your info from the planning, as a basis for this part is good. Um, you want to make sure your text is a good font. Look up websites like DaFont, D-A font, on google.com, and you want to find a font that looks appealing. You don't want to use ugly, overly large, or blocky text that might be an eyesore. And try to outline the text so that it's um, easier to see and doesn't blend in with the background. I, my, a lot of my old videos kind of blended in with the background because I'd show manga clips or whatever and I would use plain white text without much of a border and blend in. Now once the information is lined up and you sound good in your video, you want to make sure that you show some visuals. And that could be pictures from your evidence, any uh, manga panels or um, anime clips. You just want to include all the evidence you can, or even if you're doing a review, you want to show maybe um, like a clip maybe from the, the a scene in the show and you're reviewing it. It's good to uh, include all your pictures and all that, fought, like last, just so you don't mess anything up, just so you don't uh, mess up your you know, organization at all, like I said before. And you can get some good pictures off Google Images, at least for theories and uh, any sort of background. And it's nice to give visuals so that it gives people an understanding of what you're talking about and they're not just listening to you. If it's just like a black screen or the same picture, people might eventually lose interest in the video, especially if you're not including your voice. Like if you're just putting in text over like a, like one picture, it may get boring. Or if your voice is kind of monotone, um, they're gonna lose interest obviously once again. So you don't want that to happen. People might click off. And then you're gonna want to render your video once everything is done, once you've added in your, like if you wanna add in webcam too, that's also good. Once you've added in everything, make sure you have your intro, outro, everything set. Um, you're going to want to render it, and preferably in 720p. Uh, 1080p might be good, depending on how good your PC is, but it might also take too long, and uh, it'll slow down your PC while it's rendering. So it can be good in certain situations to use 1080p if it's like a really, um, if it's showing a lot of in-depth stuff that you're going to want to see small details about, like if you have little text, little text bubbles or something that people normally can't see in uh, lower qualities, then you're going to want to do 1080 but it'll take more time to download and it'll really slow down your PC if it's not very fast. Um, and then you wanna make sure it's an MP4 format or else it might not send to YouTube. I use MP4 all the time, so that's really a preferred format. And once you're done, you wanna make a thumbnail for your video. And this is uh, the uploading part of it. 
You're going to want to use Photoshop or whatever picture editing program you have, and you want to make sure that your thumbnail is unique but relevant to the topic you're talking about. You don't want to make like a video about Sanji having armament and then show a picture of like Zoro using armament, or you don't want to show like um, like just generic armament in general. You want to make sure people know that you're talking about Sanji, and you want to try to like maybe get like a Photoshop scene of him using armament or something like that, just to kind of like you know show people like hey this is going to be him using armament hockey to give them once again a visual before they even watch the video, and that'll be good to keep them interested in it. And I generally do that for my videos a lot. Don't just include like one little scene because a lot of people will use the same thumbnails typically from Google Images. So if they see the same thumbnail, they're gonna you know not click on your video because they've already seen it before. So make sure you use something unique. Try to search up other people's videos about the topic, and if they haven't used that thumbnail you're gonna choose, then you're in the clear. Um, and you're gonna wanna use something that isn't copyrighted, obviously. Once again, you can come back to copyright. Copyright is very strict on YouTube, and you wanna avoid it at all costs. I didn't get actually terminated for copyright, or I didn't get suspended. I got suspended for some other stupid reason. It was like, I accidentally copied a video and they thought I was spamming. Um, that's relevant. Now, if you're, if you're using Photoshop, you're gonna wanna make it 1920 by 1080p resolution. Um, that'll be the best uh, ratio and if you want to use a similar ratio that's fine but YouTube might not accept it and you're gonna to want to make it a JPEG a .jpeg that's like I think the only one YouTube accepts because it's a compressed file now if you're going to upload your video you're gonna to want to go to the big upload button at the top of your YouTube page and you're gonna to want to look into your computer for the rendered video that you saved which should be an mp4 format and then you're gonna click uh, open and it's gonna then it's going to send over to YouTube and it's going to start uploading it. And then you're going to get all these little options like title, description, uh, tags, and then thumbnail. And you're gonna, if you're going to use a thumbnail, you're going to want to, um, I think, verify your YouTube account. And that's the only way you can really use thumbnails. And if you have a strike on your channel, you might not be able to use thumbnails. So that kind of, that's a bummer. So what you could try to do is maybe have uh, the thumbnail that you want to use in the video so that you can just find that clip in your video and use that as a thumbnail. That's a nice little workaround. And finally, once you have an interesting title and description and a really good thumbnail, you're gonna wanna tag your video. And tagging is very, very important. It's not super important because you still wanna make sure everything else is, is good. So tagging won't necessarily make or break your video as long as it's at least decent. But I've seen people who have um, told me in the past, like I've asked them, when they're asking for advice, I'm like, did you tag your videos properly? And they're like, oh, I put like three tags. And they put like the generic tags that like most other videos have. So you want to avoid this. Make sure that the tags you use are something that people would search up in the search engine um, on Google or the just the standard YouTube search engine when they're searching stuff up. And you want to make sure that it's not something overused, but something that people are interested in and search up a lot. So let's just say if we're talking about Sanji, using armament, you're going to want to type in Sanji armament, something like that. Something that you would search up if you want to know if Sanji has armament. Or if you want to just bring up examples of of stuff, like let's just say if someone's searching up Sanji versus Virgo, you want to type in Sanji versus Virgo for a tag just so that you'll pop up maybe in there for people who are interested in that general subject matter so that you're, it's not completely irrelevant. You don't want to put in tags like PewDiePie or um, other stuff like that, something completely irrelevant like guy eats, fat man eats 50 watermelons or something like that. You're going to want to type in something that's relevant or actually YouTube could uh, suspend your account if you're putting stuff that doesn't uh, relate to your video. And once you're done with all that, once you've tagged your video, uh, YouTube's going to upload your video and it's going to say uh, save changes or it's going to say like upload, something like that, something along those lines and make sure you have everything put in properly. And then your first video should be up. And generally you're gonna wanna wait, like if you're brand new, you're not gonna get loads of views right away. When I first started out, the, the market was kinda new for uh, for One Piece theories and reviews. Maybe not so much reviews, but it's gonna take some time. And if you if you make sure you stay unique, um, you wanna make sure that you have like your own content. If you're posting stuff that other people have posted in the past, or if you're just posting really ridiculous stuff, or if you're using bad thumbnails, or if your titles are just stupid, or don't have good grammar, people are not gonna wanna click on your videos, and if they do click on your videos, they're not gonna wanna stay. So that should be 
a brief synopsis of how you edit your video or how you, um, you know, everything all together. I didn't put that much detail into this only because my fraps wasn't working. I was gonna show you, but I realized at last minute that I don't have a uh, program that records my screen. I can only record games, unfortunately, so I apologize for that. But I hope you understood this video. It was kind of long, but it should give you, it should cover most of the fields of video making. So if you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, or whatever you want to do. And once again, I appreciate 50,000 subscribers, and I'll see you later.